please don't hate me, but I have to confess, I don't like to use internals visible to on my .NET applications, just for the sake of testing, unless I'm in a specific scenario. Stay till the end to see which one. Let me show you why I avoid internals visible to on my .NET projects. What do I have here? I have two projects, one the code that will be tested and the other one with the test code. And in the code that will be tested, you can see that I have here a simple class that does nothing special. Okay, it's just calling a method. This one is the public method to add a customer. And the only thing that I'm doing here right now is basically calling is valid. Obviously in a real world scenario, we'll do a lot of extra stuff here. I just want to make a point. As you can see, I have here a method that is my is valid that is just performing two checks on top of this customer object. But in fact, usually this would be complex. So since this is a different method, what I see a lot of people doing is that they use this as an internal for the sake of testing. Why? Since usually this type of validations, mappers, tend to have a bit of logic, some people prefer to expose this thing and test this validation in specific. So what do you do on those cases is that you go to your CS proj or you add um, an attribute tag to your project. There's a cool video by Nick Shapses explaining all the options that you can do. I will link that video on the description. And if you go to the CS proj, you can see here this internals visible to that is saying that this intervals visible to demo dot tests that is in fact my test project basically can access anything that is internal on this project. What does this mean? It means that methods that are internal, classes that are internal, anything that is internal can be accessed by that specific project. If you look into my tests, there are other two that are now hidden away because I will want I want to show you them in a moment. On those two that are visible, I want to show you an example when you are using that internal. So as you can see, I am here calling this is valid. That is the internal method that I exposed. You can see here when I hover on the method that the method is internal. And in one case, I'm checking if I'm providing a valid customer. It should return true. If I'm providing an invalid customer, for example, in this case, I'm sending a name that is empty, it should be false. Let's run the test to see what happens. As you can see, all my tests are succeeding. I have those two that I just showed you and other two. Let's go back to our code that is being tested, this one that has the internal. And now let's imagine that I'm, I want to perform a refactoring here because this is valid thing has grown. There's a lot of extra things now. Let's say that you have had a lot of clauses here and now you, you feel that this should go to a different class. Maybe this class will be used on another place of your application, for example. So you decide to extract this to a different class. So what you'll be doing on that case. So let's move this into a different class. I will create a new class, customer validator. This class will be internal as well. And I will copy that method into that cut paste. Now I declare here a field with it and just use it. Now you have to agree with me that this change that I have done has changed anything on the behavior of this application. So in theory, my test should still be green, right? But in fact, they are not. As you can see, they will not even compile because I changed the structure of my application. And now since my tests were depending on it, I basically screwed up. As you can see, those two tests are failing, but let me just comment those and run the tests again. As I told you, I have two extra tests and those are still green, as you can see. So what those tests are doing, they are doing exactly the same assertion that is being done in this is valid. But instead of depending on the internal method, they are going through the public interface, okay? The public method. And why I do this? Because any change to internal things should have a reflection on the outside behavior through the public contract. And while changing the public contract may be a huge problem for you, and you should be glad that your tests don't compile anymore because you change it, for internal things and private things, I don't think so. So my point is that when you use the internals visible to for the sake of testing, usually you are depending on your structure, okay? You are testing the structure of your code instead of the behavior of your application. So now I can safely remove this thing and those two tests will still be green. But as I told you, there's one scenario where I believe that the internals visible to may be really useful. And let me explain you why. Let's take a look into this open source project, the octokit.net. It's basically a GitHub API client. And 
Let's take a look into the samples. Here you can see how you can use it. If you look into this thing, you can see that what you'll be doing if you want to use this code is that you define your variable GitHub and then you instantiate the GitHub client. So what does this mean? It means that when you call this user.get, there's an HTTP request to the GitHub API. So what's the relationship between this thing that I'm showing you and the internals visible to? On a scenario like this, I might want to define a clear and really strict contract with the outside world to publish a library. So I don't want to expose extra things. What does that mean? It means that for me to test my library, to test this GitHub client, I may not be able to do it without touching the real API or running a kind of a fake or mock server to test this thing. So in some cases like this, when you are exposing a library, it may be really useful to have these internals visible too, with the goal of doing a kind of a subcutaneous test where you don't use the real API always, you leave that just for a few tests, but for most of the tests, just to make sure that they will run really fast, you can go through this approach. It's common to see people advocating for the internals visible too, saying that even Microsoft on the .NET repos use this a lot. And it's true, but it's true because Microsoft is building a library like this GitHub client API. So they need to do that so we don't suffer as a consumer of that library. On public libraries, the friction of adoption is really important to think about. It's all about user experience, developer experience. And now, do you agree with me? Will you keep using internals visible too? Leave a comment down below and tell me what you think about this. If you are not convinced yet, make sure that you watch this video right here. I will see you soon, and in the meanwhile, just keep things simple.